Welcome back, everyone, to Julia Khan the podcast. Uh, my name is Nathan. Um, <laughs> Your name is not Nathan. <laughs> my name is not Nathan. That's what it says in the script. I'm just reading no. the script. Where's Nathan? No, Nathan. Nathan's not here today. Oh. Um, well, in that case, my name's Kano, and I will be your co-host today, along with. Hi, I'm Huda. All right. Perfect. Uh, so we're hoping to do a little bit of a shorter episode today. Um, we have two interviews for you and a bunch of follow-up content. Um, so I will start with the follow-up content. So first, a correction. Um, we have said in two previous episodes that I recorded Julia 1.0 release on my phone, uh, when in fact, I recorded it on Viral's phone while using my phone for reading the live stream comments. So uh, Viral wanted me to correct that. So you now, you now know the truth. Never let anybody say that we aren't completely accurate. Um, all right. In JuliaCon news, uh, registrations have reached 9,000. Uh, so maybe 10,000 by now. 9,000 was from this morning. So, uh, so you'd say the number of registrations is over 9,000? It is over 9,000. <laughs> that is exactly right. Um, and uh, moreover, we have had more than 7,000 unique views uh, of the videos released so far. So uh, not only are people registering, but people are actually actively participating and watching and all that good stuff. Um, so I'm very excited. And I'm excited for talks to start on Wednesday. Uh, speaking of talks, uh, Huda, do you want to do a quick plug for your workshop? Uh, tomorrow? Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, we have one of the workshops tomorrow is on uh, writing just like high performance Julia code. It's going to be at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. It's really more of a beginner level, I would say, uh, Julia um, uh, workshop. So if you've been using Julia for a while, uh, you might want to go to the other one. But if you know someone who wants to learn how to write uh, fast, uh, good um, performance Julia codes, you should send them to this workshop. Uh, we'll basically just cover things uh, that you should like type stability type things or how to access memory in Julia or like matrixy stuff, how are things organized in memory and stuff like that that um, are good to know while you're writing your Julia code. All right, perfect. I definitely think I need to know how to write fast Julia code. So that sounds <laughs> like the right kind of workshop. Um, and then I think the other workshop that is happening tomorrow and uh, tomorrow meaning Tuesday, uh, depending on how long this takes to edit. It may be Monday or Tuesday when this is released. Um, but in any case, the other workshop happening tomorrow will be MLJ, um, the sort of meta machine learning toolkit that combines all the various different machine learning, deep learning, um, and related packages that we have into one uh, unified framework and API. So if you want to do machine learning, um, of various sorts, and you want a more friendly API um, or curated tutorials and all of that good stuff, um, definitely check out MLJ. And the tutorial on that will be, as usual, at 10 a.m. Eastern. And I won't bother doing time conversions because I got that wrong on the previous episodes, and then I had to edit it out uh, in the edit. So this time, look at the schedule yourself if you're not where I am. Um, all right, a couple uh, more follow-up items. Uh, Julia 1.5 RC2 is officially released as of earlier today. Um, so if you want to check out the RC and find any issues, please do. Um, in other news, there was a Reddit AMA today, actually still going on. I'll get back to it after this is over. But a Reddit AMA with myself and Jeff and Stefan and Boral um, answering the internet's fun and sometimes unfun and everything in between questions. Um, and that should just be on the uh, front page of our IMA still. But if it isn't, we'll also put links in the various descriptions. Um, and lastly, this podcast, episode two, had 1,000 unique views on YouTube. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, so 
thank you to all 1,000 of you who are watching. And please remember to fill out the form, ask me for feedback. And we hope you'll enjoy this episode also. Um, and with that, I'll turn it back to Huda to interview our first guest and today's guest editor, because after last episode, I did not want to do that again. Uh, Elliot Saba. So Huda, why don't you uh, take over? Thank you, Keno. Uh, hi, Elliot. Hello. So first of all, we already said that to you uh, outside of the live stream, but you really don't know what you're signing up for in terms of editing the <laughs> episode. So good luck. <laughs> Um, second, maybe let's start, let's, let's go to, um, we'll, we'll do a similar pattern with uh, what we did uh, in the previous episode uh, in terms of like, we're going to go back a few years and see how did you first learn about Julia? How did you get involved in the community uh, first? When did that happen? And uh, maybe just give us a brief history of you and Julia. Yeah, gosh, let's see. Um... I think I first heard about Julia when Julia 0.1 was announced on Slashdot, of all places. Um, wow. And I, I saw it, and I thought to myself, you know, I use MATLAB for a lot of stuff. I've been trying to switch my lab, because I was in graduate school at the time, over to using Python, uh, meeting some success. But I was still kind of um, dissatisfied with the performance I was getting. I did digital signal processing research, and so it was a lot of numerics. Um, and so I saw this and I thought, you know, this looks pretty cool. I downloaded the uh, Julia Git, Git repository, tried to build it on my Mac, and it didn't build. There was some linker error. Uh, and I looked at it and I thought to myself, you know. Which year was that? Do you remember? Um, I think this was 2012, probably spring of 2012 or 2013, one okay. of the two. Um, it was just after I had broken my ankle. So I was stuck oh, wow. in bed with nowhere to go. And what better thing to do- I remember that actually. Perfect Sorry, timing. <laughs> yeah. What better thing to do than to sit around and build stuff off of GitHub, right? Um, and so I, I, I looked at it and I was like, I think if I change this one linker flag, it might work. And it did. Uh, and so I submitted a pull request. And Viral merged it immediately and said, hey, you know, welcome to the team. So glad to have you contributing here. He was so friendly. I was like, hey, this is great. Uh, next week, the, the, my fix got broken somehow, so I fixed it again, and it's all downhill from there. Um, it's really, it's really interesting how, you know, I spend even today a lot of time looking at linker errors and and fixing makefile flags. So, something very uh, forward thinking <laughs> in that. <laughs> so it all started with just fixing a linker, um, just like a small, like one one specific thing, yeah. and then now you're doing Julia for um, a living, basically, right? Like, yeah, this yeah, is I am. what you do. I, I am yeah, wow. very happily employed by Julia Computing, and I have poured uh, countless hours, even before that, in grad school into um, all sorts of weird stuff, starting from getting stuff to work on Mac, then moving into why can't we have nice binaries that just work on people's machines? So I built Homebrew, I helped out with bin depths, binary provider, binary builder. It's been- Yeah, and, and didn't you just give a workshop about that um, two days ago or? I did, you yes. Talk yeah. Right, so and I. how did that workshop go? And like, how, what's your feedback about it? Like, what, how was the online experience and yeah. all this? So when Mose and I first envisioned this workshop, our idea was we'll get all the people who are normally asking us questions on Slack into a room together We'll have them try and build their stuff after we give a presentation about how to build it. Uh, and when they have errors, they'll be able to walk around. It'll be like office hours, right? Fun, informal, small scale. Um, and the night before, we were freaking out on Slack together saying, what's going to happen if 300 people show up and they all have errors and we can't do anything? Uh, but actually, it actually turned out really well. Um, we had a, a good number of people. We had some really good questions. And by the end of the four hours, my brain certainly felt like a sponge that had been run clean. But I think that we, we came up with some really nice material that uh, we can refer to for the next year as people are trying to solve these issues in the ecosystem, trying to build nice binaries for everyone. That's awesome. Cool. Um, so your focus is on binaries. That's one, one of your focuses, right? Do you work on other things? Uh, 
yeah, so so binaries and the package ecosystem, that's certainly a focus of mine um, that I've kind of been glued to for the last seven years, six years. Oh, wow. That. Um, off and on. Uh, another and that's, that's, that ecosystem is rapidly evolving, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. We have a lot of goodies uh, lined up for yeah. the 1.6. Um, that's awesome. It's, it's funny because I like to joke that everyone who's involved with Julia uh, is always coming at it from some like tangential field. So, you know, we have like an aeronautical engineer who works on the compiler, you know, physicist who works on the compiler. We have a chemist who is doing a bunch of linear algebra stuff. Um, in my case, I was a like signal processing and machine learning person who decided to do binaries and, and package work. Um, and I do sometimes do machine learning stuff and I may do more in the future, but uh, you know, everyone's got their fingers in multiple pies and it's fun. That's true. That's, that's awesome. That's actually, that's what's really nice about the Julia eco, like the Julia community at large where like everyone has different kinds of expertise, but they all come down to like one pool where a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of expertise in a lot of different areas. So uh, it's just amazing. Uh, so you mentioned there's a lot of goodies coming from the package management ecosystem. Do you want to tell us maybe one or two things about that? Sure. Yeah. So uh, Stefan, Christopher, and I have been on a crusade for a while to try and make packages immutable. Uh, because as, uh, as you'll hear in the package talk later this week, uh, an immutable package is a happy package. It means that, uh, you know, silly users can't screw anything up or even worse, uh, the uh, machines that are running them can't screw things up for our gentle and uh, benevolent users. So Interesting. <laughs> we, we do as much as we can to separate out uh, the things that can change and the things that should be constant over time. Like for instance, the source code and the state of the binaries and the state of the preferences, the settings inside of the packages, that kind of stuff. So we have two new features coming up that I'm pretty excited about. One is preferences, the ability to kind of configure a package at compile time so that it can change its behavior based on the environment of the system or like the particular backend that the user wants to engage. And another one is scratch spaces. So basically they're temporary folders that live for the lifetime of the package so that packages don't have to modify their own package directories and thereby create mutable states that can get in wedged situations. Hmm. Interesting. Is that going to cause a lot of uh, drama, like when we moved from require to TOML files and uh, stuff? <laughs> we, we do our best to make things as backwards compatible as possible. Um, okay. These luckily... I mean, I, I, I don't know if we actually went through drama, but I just saw a lot of questions about that on this course. I, like, I just remember that. Yeah, maybe, you know, on, on the scale of drama, it's like a 3.5 on the Richter scale, right? So not, not too bad, but still noticeable. Um, I think that, uh, but I mean, it's, it's, it's for the best, like it's for the best for, uh, for the system. Like now it's so much better actually to have the Tomal flies, right? Like it's the, the big picture is probably, it's good to remember what the end goal at the end of the day, but yeah, sorry. Uh, yes. But of course, as the developers, right, we're always thinking that what we're doing is the best for the system. <laughs> it's good to listen to. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, sure. um, so yeah, how do you expect that transition to go? Or uh, what's, what, what, what will the package maintainers have to know or like maybe um, know at this point even before this change happens? For these two features, um, which there will be an overview of them during the package talk um, later this week mm -hmm. with me and Stefan. Um, for these two features- with What day is that? Um, I, that's a bad question to ask okay. because I don't remember. Okay. Look then look for Elliot's uh, talk with uh, Jeff and Stefan, you said? Uh, just uh, just uh, and Stefan. Kind of, I'll try to find it now and maybe we can um, yeah. uh, point to it towards the end of the episode, but sure, <laughs> okay. Um, it's, uh, we're going to have a brief overview of what the API will look like in 1.6. These are new features in 1.6, so old packages will just not use them and new packages can opt into using them by you know, invoking the APIs. Um, there are other changes that will be affecting artifacts uh, that are a little more under the hood that may cause some small uh, issues when we're upgrading to 1.6, but we'll be doing our best to hide those behind things that only engage when you're running on Julia 0.6 and things like that. So for all the old mm -hmm. code, it should continue to work just as it does, but for the new goodies, you'll have to opt in and maybe change the way that you invoke binaries and things like that a little bit. Cool, that's, that's pretty cool. 
Good to know. Okay, so we're starting to run out of time, but we have some fun questions for you. We'll start obviously with the first one because maybe, uh, sorry, the first one is going to be, uh, you want to tell us about the story um, of your um, Santa hat, uh, because just, just for context here, if people are watching for the very first time or they're seeing Elliot for the very first time, Elliot walks around uh, with the Santa hat at every JuliaCon, is that correct? Yeah. Like, I don't think I even knew your name first. I just knew that you're the one with the Santa hat. Like, that's, that's how... Um, that's how I would remember you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad you're wearing it at JuliaCon right now. <laughs> so maybe people uh, want to know what's the story behind it. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's helpful, right? Um, partly because, uh, so on GitHub, first off, my avatar is a blue whale with a Santa. That's true. Uh, yeah. When I'd go up to people at JuliaCon, I would shake their hands and I'd be like, hello, my name's Elliot Sabat. And they'd be like, hmm, that seems vaguely familiar. I'd say, I'm the blue whale with the Santa hat. And they'd be like, ah, yes, I know who you are now. That happened to me four or five times on my first JuliaCon. I thought to myself, you know, I might as well roll with it. Uh, the reason why it's a blue whale with Santa hat is actually one of those very mundane, like silly stories. I had this friend in college. She used to call me Whaley because she thought I was smart or something. Um, at least that was her <laughs> explanation as to why she would say that. I started changing my profile picture to all these different whales. And it was around Christmas time. I photoshopped the Santa hat onto it. And then I forgot about it. And a year and a half later, I signed <laughs> up to GitHub. And GitHub automatically pulls that avatar over from some other service that I had it on. And I looked at it and I thought to myself, you know, I'm not going to use GitHub for anything anyway. So it doesn't really matter what kind of avatar I put there. And here we are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's I did not know that story. I don't think I've asked you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Okay, a couple more questions. Uh, we did ask last time about, um, so when you write your own personal Julia code for maybe some random project you're working on, or like, I don't know, maybe helping out um, some colleague or something with Julia code, what's your uh, pipeline? What's your IDE? How do you, uh, where do you develop your code? Yeah, so... Um... Weirdly enough, a large amount of code that I write is on like very resource constrained remote servers. So I do use SSH and Vi a lot, uh, but that's not my favorite experience. Uh, it's a little constrained, as I said before. Um, VS Code is probably my, my favorite, hands down. Um, I think they've, they've been doing a great job of it and uh, it's just very pleasant to work with and it has an integrated terminal, which is where I live, so. Right. Sometimes I find myself opening Vi to edit stuff in the terminal of VS Code, and I have to kind of slap <laughs> myself and, and actually use the, the real editor. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, okay, final question. Uh, you work at Julia Computing, right? Yes. Uh, so who is your boss at Julia Computing? Well, until very recently, <laughs> it was Kano. But Oh, okay. But I was uh, moved over to Stefan's leadership. Uh, Great. Mostly. Now we can ask him who's going to be a better boss, <laughs> Kano or Stefan. <laughs> Re really, uh, it, it just because I've been working on more PKG stuff than like compiler or, or like compiler slash ML stuff recently, um, that may change in the future. Uh, in actuality, a lot of the work that I do is mostly me telling my boss, hey, I think this is the next thing I need to work on. And my bosses go, you know, that sounds good. So uh, at Julia Computing, it we're very- It makes it so much easier for us if we don't have to tell you what to do. <laughs> like... Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, I, I like to think of Julia Computing as like this, uh, this circle. Well, not even really Julia Computing. It's more like the whole Julia ecosystem. We're like this circle where each person has their little piece of, um, of surface area and they're all pushing outwards at once and we have overlap with each other on the people around us in this little area but you know everyone's got their own little area that they're trying to push forward and as long as we can all agree on what the end point should be it it's going to get done so you're awesome. saying we're an idea and gas <laughs> they're saying what sorry i didn't hear you Kano. Uh, i said we're you're saying we're an ideal gas <laughs> if we ask valentine we might say something about honeybees but sure <laughs> I was going to say that was a pretty good answer to not answer who is your favorite boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I'd like to keep on working at Julie Computing, so. <laughs> so <enough>. step on. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, we're running out of time with you, Elliot. Thanks so much for joining us. This was really fun. Um, Thank you for um, having me. If there's, sorry. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, well, now, uh, now we're going to move to, I think, Keno, and he's going to be interviewing yeah. our next guest, James. All right, thanks. Thanks, Sudo, for that uh, wonderful interview with Elliot, who is one of my favorite people in the ecosystem because he fixes CI when it breaks. Uh, and without CI, nobody gets work done. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. All right. So for a second interview, uh, we have James Fairbanks today. And we wanted to have you on the previous episode for, to talk about your graphs uh, workshop, which was on Friday. Is that right? Saturday? Yeah. Friday? Uh, Friday morning, East Coast time. Friday morning. Right. So we wanted to have you on sooner. Um, but you know, better better late than never. So why don't we start at the beginning with uh, how you got into Julia and uh, what you're working on? Yeah. Um, so I got into Julia because I was working on uh, spectral clustering and and really eigensolvers. Jumping right in, doing uh, you know tech core technical. You got my attention, James. Spectral clustering. Okay. And uh, yeah, so, so I was working on, on graph analytics and I was using Python and I needed to get extra information out of the IGS function. And so I, I dug through the Python source code and I was like, you know, I'm doing numerical analysis. So I really need this deeper information about what the solver is doing. Dig into the Python code and I hit a wall, which is Fortran code. And I'm like, okay, I don't really know Fortran, you know, at all, but let me try reading the Fortran source code, see if this information is there. And I find a to-do note that Rich LaHook wrote saying, to-do, implement this feature, which would give me the answer I needed. Signed, 1996. And so <laughs> I was like, that's not a sustainable system for me to fix this bug that, uh, that finished this to-do note that this guy put in here, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I found uh, at the time it was Jihau and Andreas Nowak had written a iterative solvers package in pure Julia. Yeah. It wasn't as fast and it wasn't as accurate and it wasn't as feature complete, but it, what it gave me raw access to what I needed. And so I didn't have to fix Rich LaHook's Fortran bug or unfinished thesis work. <laughs> I think you're the first person uh -oh. who, came, who uh, uh, came on the show and said that the first time they tried Julia, it was slower than what they had before. <laughs> <laughs> Usually people yeah. always say it's faster. Yeah, that, well, it was faster than the Python code I had written. <laughs> but it wasn't faster Good than the enough. Fortran code my Python it. code was calling. <laughs> um, and that was back in 02. So, you know, not, not, uh, not 2002, but 0.2. <laughs> All right. And uh, what, are, what are you doing now? Still the same sort of general work or? No, um, I totally mixed things up um, after much like how Rich LaHook stopped working on IGS and RPAC after he graduated grad school uh, in 97. Uh, I no longer do spectral clustering. <laughs> um, and now I'm actually working on a new thing in the Algebraic Julia organization called CatLab. And it's a category theory library that's implemented in Julia. And it kind of has a symbolic computer algebra flavor and a little bit of a graph theory. You know, it uses graphs on the back end. Um, but it's all about how scientific computing uses graphs as a data structure, but they give them mathematical interpretations where it's like a graph that's representing a probability distribution or representing an electrical circuit. So I'm working on CatLab to, to really um, expand my horizons beyond uh, simple graph theory. <laughs> Do you have a background in category theory or is that something you're just starting to get into? 
I have a background of about 12 months. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so yeah, never heard about it in school. Um, started working on a project. Uh, we started with the question, what is a mathematical model? Right. Open-ended question, what is a model? And it took us six months to figure out an answer. And, and the answer was, well, if we learn more category theory, then we can answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like that somehow is always the answer to any question involving category theory. It's, well, yeah. we just need a little more category theory. It's, it's, it's a matter of recursive in that way. Yeah, um, yeah, I get that, I get that vibe. <laughs> uh, but, so you're talking about the, uh, this category theory work at JuliaCon also, right? Do you have a talk on it? Yeah, it's on the 29th, um, coming up this week. Uh, I guess I'm kicking things off, uh, kicking off the workshops on Friday and kicking off the main session on Wednesday. So. All right. Do you want to do you want to do a brief 30 second of why people should come to your talk? Oh, yeah, um, they should come to my talk because uh, I think that if they're using Julia and they're doing technical computing, um, they're doing something uh, where more math would would help make their their job easier. And Cat Lab, we're trying to implement uh, as many different types of math as we can to help scientific computing advance the ball forward. Um, so it's going to be an interesting talk, I think. Uh, I pre-recorded it, so I already know uh, at least how interesting <laughs> I find it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, it's something it's something that was really novel for me to to learn about, something I I didn't learn about in school. So I think we're building something um, really good. On, in Cat Lab. So yeah. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> I think I think I, I I'm you know I'm actually quite fascinated by uh, uh, by category theory. I know there was a uh, MIT a few a year or two ago. You know before the pandemic and everything, there was an IAP class on applied category theory that I. David Spivak taught that I, class, right? Yeah, I think I, I, you're you're talking to those guys, right? Yeah, I uh, I have this book on my bookshelf here by David, um, uh, and yeah, I I really found this book. And reading the preface, I was like, oh, he's thinking about exactly the things we're thinking about. Like, what are we doing when we're doing scientific modeling? You know, how can we build a mathematical model of scientific modeling? Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, David David's awesome. Uh, all right, and we are getting close to time, but uh, before we started this, you said you had your JuliaCon glass uh, with you. Yeah. So I figured I, we should, uh, you know, we, this give, is, uh, give you a chance to show it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it was really funny uh, at the JuliaCon 1.0 party, uh, Jihao was running around with these things like they were illicit goods. Uh, <laughs> Trying to find people and be like, "Yo, I got a, I got a thing you might be interested in." <laughs> <laughs> so when he approached me with that, I was very surprised, very caught off guard. Um, but I think it's really special. Every time I celebrate, you know, I got I got my first DARPA award uh, last year, and uh, if I hadn't been involved in the Julia community and found met this great community with all the great people in it that really taught me so much, I wouldn't have been in a position to succeed like that. Um, uh -huh. So it's, it's my celebratory, when I have a thing that I, that I celebrate and that thing is connected to Julia, I always drink out of my, drink my good bourbon out of my Julia cup. <laughs> uh, that that uh, DARPA award, was it with, with Galois? I think your name came up when I visited those guys. Those yeah, guys they're, um, they're co-performers on ASCII, right. Automating Scientific Knowledge Extraction. Um, so yeah, trying to it, teach computers to understand science. <laughs> it, it, it was really funny. I was, at a, I was a PI on the uh, uh, IAPA Hector, the, uh, the homomorphic mm -hmm. encryption work that uh, we were on with them. So I was out in, uh, in Portland at the, at the Galwa office for, uh, 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 for the collaboration meeting. The kickoff, yeah. One of the, uh, 
one of the Gawa folks, you know, was really excited that I was there. I was like, yeah, you got to see this. We have something to show you. You know, we've been, we've been working on something in Julia with James Fairbanks. And I said, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to see this. So um, I, I actually got a demo of that work. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. When I was in Portland. The, um, yeah, when I uh, met, I went out to Portland to meet with those guys. And they're like, oh, you're doing Julia. We're, we're starting this Hectare project with a guy, Kino. Uh -huh. And you might be really interested in, in what we're doing. So, <laughs> yeah. in the, so the small world like we, of. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like we had the same experience, but on, you know, on opposite, on opposite teams yeah. when we were there. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I think that is probably about. Um, all the time we have. Uh, anything else you want to say to our audience before we go, though? Any? Um, any messages? No, I, I, to, to the people who are new to JuliaCon, uh, it's so great to have more people and to have all the talks accessible and, and a global reach. Um, but the, hopefully next year we can have an in-person JuliaCon again and really you know, get to see our friends in person. That's really, you have a, when you're in the Julia community, you have a global network of, of really talented, uh, technically competent, nice, caring people that you're a part of. And, and JuliaCon is where we really, you know, will that into existence in the real world. So um, hopefully we'll have a, a physical JuliaCon next year. <laughs> to, uh, I 100% agree with that. I, I hear we have to quote Tim Holy in every uh, in every podcast episode, but uh, to quote Tim Holy, uh, Julia Khan is like an explosion in an ideas factory. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's that is really good. <laughs> yeah, it, it uh, rings very true for me because uh, yeah. last year at Julia Khan, I think I mapped out about six months of my year in that week of just talking with people, trying out ideas, thinking about things, hacking stuff together. It's a blast. So. Really looking yeah. forward to uh, uh, not just Bin this. binary builder. Binary builder was a was a Julia Khan like initial. Well, I mean, we talked about it for several months, but like at Julia Khan, uh, you and me and, um, uh, and Tony. Uh, Tony Tony Kelman in in Berkeley. Uh, yep. That was. Uh, that was that was the Berkeley year. year. That was. Yeah. That was a Berkeley. good. That was the first time we actually. We actually sat down and talked about what what we thought binary builder should do, and then it it took us a good like two years to actually make that happen. <laughs> so one day of planning at Julia Khan, two years of work to actually get it done. Um, and uh, speaking of Tim Holy, at the first ever Julia Khan in Chicago in Chicago, um, Tim Holy and I implemented generated functions at the uh, at the JuliaCon hackathon, so wow, fun, yeah, the fun uh, the yeah. Berkeley JuliaCon was my first um, experience with the with JuliaCon, and I met Tim Holy, and I met your um, co-host Nathan. I think he was there um, with a I think with a poster. Uh, so yeah, that's true. Nathan actually was at the Berkeley one. Yes. Yeah, uh, um, I'd, I'd be really embarrassed if it was some question. other redhead redheaded. Uh, Kid at the <laughs> just mistake them, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they okay. uh, met Nathan there, and and as a great, great community. Uh, just a quick question: Does anyone know if there's going to be a hackathon this year? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I've heard anything about it, but we will find out and update you on the podcast. So I will put that on my to-do list for tomorrow. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. So thank you, James, again, for coming on the podcast. Um, we appreciate you taking the time. And I am looking forward to actually uh, seeing your talk because, as I said, the, I really did like the applied category theory class that was taught at MIT, and it sounded like a really cool thing. So, you know, I didn't necessarily think it was applicable to Julia at the time, but now it sounds like it is. So um, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, finding out how that works 
And that will be the uh, first talk on Wednesday. Great. Um, Thank you so much for having me. All right. Uh, so I think we are uh, almost at the end of this podcast. As we said, this episode will be a little shorter because we only have two guests. Um, let's see, did anybody on the live stream want to be on the Say Hi segment? I know we sent out a call a little late. Uh, so if not, this entire discussion is getting edited out. Oh, Nathan wants to come say hi. Oh. So let's, let's bring on Nathan yeah. for, uh, for our say hi segment. Hello, Nathan. Hello, El, hi. Um, <laughs> couldn't make it earlier, but uh, I just caught the last half of your interview, James, and it sounded really cool. <laughs> yeah, I then when I heard so. that you maybe met me, I had to come on and say hi. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think it was uh, me, yeah. yeah. What was your poster about? I it didn't was have something... a poster, but I was there. Okay, I don't then think. we, I had we talk talked to in front of somebody no, else's poster. I don't know. Yeah, 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 that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I just was there. Okay, that's, that's why I was uncertain about whether it was you because i was talking to a different guy's poster um but yeah anyway um yeah it's good it's good to see people enter the community and stay i think the um especially to see younger people get involved and we're really we're really building something special uh, you know the language the community around the language all the projects everybody doing a julia project is doing something exciting in their Julia project, right? Um, at least that's still true, and maybe not. It might not be true a couple of years from now, once we once we uh, become mainstream. <laughs> but at least now we're we're still uh, still like a cool band that hasn't signed their big record deal yet. <laughs> and I I hope we can stay that way. I think it'll it'll require some new technical and social structures to make that happen. But I. You know, the, the innovation is definitely one of the key things that, you know, I really like about the Julia community. Um, so, you know, I, I will certainly do my darndest to uh, make sure it stays that way for as long as possible. Um, and I want I want to jump on what you're just saying, Jens, real quick, and say that I think yeah, like the invitingness of the community is so wonderful. Like when I was at that first JulieCon in Berkeley, 2017, uh, like someone literally walked up to me within the first 10 minutes of me being there. It was Sasha Verwise, and he was just like, uh, "Hi, uh, you look new here. Like, how's it going?" And then he started talking to me, and and like it was so inviting, and I like still remember that. Um, and like now he's one of my best friends in the Julia world. Um, so I want to make sure that we, even though it's online, that we can like do that still so if you're watching this podcast please come on and just hop on and say hi to us we'd love to yes. just get a chance to get to know you so um we're it looks like we're recording in the evening times et yes uh, evening eastern time. evening eastern uh our next US. recording session will be tuesday uh so i think the plan is to start a daily cadence of these which is extremely scary to me because it took me almost a day to edit the last one <laughs> so hopefully we have that fixed uh, but yes, if you would like to be on the podcast, we're hoping to have you know a more extended say hi segment. Just you know, come hang out on the podcast and introduce yourself uh, to the to the community. Um, okay, uh, Nathan, do you want to do the outro actually, or I, I think Nita no. said she was having <laughs> some connection issues. Oh, okay, sure. What am I uh, outroing? Well. Uh, there is a one item in the Google Doc. Okay, oh gosh. Sorry, I was just in another meeting and then I it, it finished 15 minutes early. So yeah, so like, see, Elliot, this is, this is why editing this is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep some of this in, I don't mind. Okay, I'm outroing. And so I believe that I'm gonna read this one single line here. Yes. Here I go. <laughs> Okay. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us at the Julia Comp podcast today, episode three. Uh, I only got to jump in for the very end here, but it was a pleasure being with you. And uh, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Like Kenna just said, we're going to be doing this every day starting soon. So um, please do come by and join us. Uh, listen to the podcast. Join us in the evenings for these say hello segments. If you are here and you're in the YouTube chat, we'll just bring you on. We'd be happy to have you. So um, 
Also, if you're uh, looking to listen, we're now available on Apple Podcasts. We have an audio format podcast on Apple Podcasts, on Pocket Casts, on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. I think that's what the podcast people say these days. Uh, so wherever you get your podcasts, like, subscribe, rate, etc. cetera. Uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, fill out the feedback form down below, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.